it's wonderful to have you here, Jerry, and really appreciate that. Um, you know, we were just talking outside, and then it's fascinating what you're working on. So could you just share a little bit about what you're working on? Sure. Yeah, I uh, founded a company called Agribody Technologies about mm -hmm. three years ago, and it's based on a fundamental genetic switch, which is conserved among all plants and all animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, the technology basically involves initially validating the target, mm -hmm. making sure that if you turn down expression of one of those genes, that you get the desirable traits. And the three traits that we offer to seed companies, and then who pass that on to their customers, farmers, and ultimately the consumer, is longer shelf life, mm -hmm. the perishable products two to threefold. We also, for farmers, increase the yield of crops significantly. And finally, we offer uh, the trade offers the, the ability for plants to survive and thrive under conditions of stress, like drought, high temperature, lack of nutrients, salt. So there are worldwide applications. We think the market is about $13 billion in, mm -hmm. in 12 crops that we're targeting. And we're focusing now on, rather than row crops, on high, sp high value specialty crops like oh, produce that's... and trying to increase the shelf. We've proven shelf life extension of two to three fold mm -hmm. in bananas and tomatoes and in flowers. So the intervention basically comes at the seed level here. Right. We make a genetic change to the mm -hmm. seed and all of its progeny, that is all of the plants, uh, have that trait. So there's no need to add seed treatments like bacteria or chemicals mm -hmm. to stimulate. Um, these plants can produce the same yields in much poorer environments. Mm -hmm. And given global climate change and the increase in population and the rising middle class, uh, this is exactly one of the solutions, not the only one, but one of the important solutions that farmers need and the public needs in order to feed another 1.9 billion people in the next oh, absolutely. 30, 33 <laughs> growing seasons. <laughs> and also, you know, we are now 7 billion, soon to be 9 billion. So we are mm -hmm. exponentially growing. You know, that applies the pun intended in the growth environment. So when you mentioned about agriculture, you know, clearly it's a biotech application mm -hmm. to agriculture as a vertical. When you keep mentioning farmers, is it something corporations buy or you can directly sell as a B2C to farmers as a technology? No, uh, farmers buy their seeds from mm -hmm. seed companies. Got it. So our direct customers are seed companies. Mm -hmm. But one of, the things, one of the things I've learned recently is that although the method we're using now, once we validate the target using transgenic methods, we apply genome editing to make mm -hmm. a small mutation without leaving anything behind. We're not adding any foreign DNA. Mm -hmm. So in, in, let's call them GMO-friendly jurisdictions like mm -hmm. the United States, recently Japan, Brazil, Argentina, Israel, Sweden, these are countries that basically have decided that genome editing, where you're not adding anything new to the plant, you're just mm -hmm. making a mutation, mm -hmm. which is what seed developers have been doing for 10,000 years. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, that it's not regulated, and therefore it's not labeled. And so we can get products introduced in the marketplace, mm -hmm. basically adding one year to the uh, standard development timeline. Oh, that's actually really remarkable. And it costs maybe $150,000 instead of tens of millions for conventional sure. transgenics. Wow. So how long have you been working on this? I've been working on it for three years. My mm -hmm. co-founder, John Thompson, who discovered this switch and uh, exploited it commercially, mm -hmm. uh, has been working on it for about 15 years. Wonderful. So there are examples. Um, a guy named uh, uh, Zach Lipman from mm -hmm. Cold Spring Harbor has worked in tomatoes, and he followed exactly the same process. That is, you validate a target using mm -hmm. GMO methods. Mm -hmm. But then to commercialize it, you use genome editing, and that allows you to introduce it into the marketplace with no risk um, at a much lower cost. I know for the sake of clarification only, could you define what target, what, what target are you, you know, what do you mean by target here? So there, in my case, in Agrobody's case, there mm -hmm. are two genes mm -hmm. that each produce a protein. One protein decorates the other one. Mm -hmm. And the cell, in it, whether it's a plant or an animal cell, is always sensing the ratio between the decorated and the undecorated form. Mm -hmm. When there's a predominance of decorated protein, then it goes into senescence and mm -hmm. it dies. Yep. Um, when there's a very little uh, decorated, the cell continues to grow and divide. And so what John Thompson discovered was by flipping the switch in favor of continued growth and development, mm -hmm. either by reducing the amount of the decorating protein or increasing the amount of its substrate, mm -hmm. that you get these three wonderful traits. You get um, higher yields, mm -hmm. both of the seeds and the vegetative plants. Mm -hmm. 
you get tolerance to stress, mm -hmm. and you get longer shelf life. So essentially, in a nutshell, what this switch does is it's an anti-suicide switch that cells and plants are always basically committing suicide mm -hmm. under transient sublethal stress, like drought. So right. plants can't run away. They're sessile. Yeah. They're stuck <laughs> their whole life. When yeah. the seed sprouts, that's where that plant is. And so it's evolved all kinds of mechanisms, mm -hmm. biological and chemical warfare and lots of things to protect itself. But plant cells will kill themselves to help the plant survive. Oh, for sure. And so that's what John manipulated transgenically, and that's mm -hmm. what we're doing now uh, using genome editing. So I know it definitely it clearly has applications in agriculture. This is a huge mm -hmm. agri-tech area. And that also brings you here mm -hmm. to the AP you know, FinTech Challenge. I know it's not FinTech, it's agri-tech, but the fact is it can lead to better crop insurance. It can lead to, there's mm -hmm. a direct and direct connection. Yep. So what is your experience of coming to you know, FinTech and how did you even hear about the AP Andhra Pradesh you know, FinTech Challenge? Well, I got an email uh -huh. out of the blue, and I said, thank you very much for the invitation, but we're not a fintech company. Mm -hmm. We have nothing to do with fintech. <laughs> and I was told, well, don't worry about it, because ag tech counts. Yes, so I very can't... important to Indian context. Right, so <laughs> I know my, I actually hired the uh, f former head of Illumina's um, uh, genome, agricultural genomics uh, mm -hmm. division, which is a $200 million division. He's working for us now. Um, and if we won the prize, he committed to me personally that he would help set up the subsidiary in, in Fearsack. Oh, I think you're in the right place. You know, regardless of, you know, what the pitches and everything, I think Andhra Pradesh, you know, is extremely fertile and known for a lot of agriculture. You know, a lot of agriculture is grown, extremely relevant. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the, the food supply, the distribution, the food shortage in India seeds do matter and healthy seeds do matter mm -hmm. without contamination. Um, let me ask another last question here is why are you looking at Indian market? I know there's African continent, there's Brazil, like have you been to all of these different places? Like you know or like what's your foray right now from lab to the <coughs> actual market? The major markets in the United States. Okay. Um, because the regulatory system is mm -hmm. predictable mm -hmm. um, and gotten more predictable since March when Sonny uh, Purdue basically mm -hmm. announced that genome editing of the type we do is not mm -hmm. regulated. And you're right, Brazil and Argentina are also very supportive of this, as is Japan and, mm -hmm. as I said, um, Sweden and uh, Israel. <laughs> um, Tell me about Israel. I just came back from Tel Aviv, so I'm really curious about <laughs> Great place the agriculture as, you know, angle to it. Well, they're the startup nation, and mm -hmm. they pretty much invented irrigation. Yes. You know, making the <laughs> desert bloom is an Israeli invention mm -hmm. going back to the 50s and 60s. For sure. So I have uh, pretty much unlimited respect for the ingenuity mm -hmm. of Israelis, and they have a real vested interest in making agriculture work because they're about the size of New Jersey. Correct. <laughs> and they have to feed a population <laughs> surrounded by hostile countries. Um, so, as I said, I'm, I'm very uh, respectful of Israelis. Mm -hmm. I spent a little bit of time there a couple of decades ago. Mm -hmm. Got a great tour. Um, but uh, we don't have any, we have a partner in Israel. It's, in mm -hmm. Israel, it's the Israeli kibbutz that, that yeah. provides uh, the germplasm for almost all the bananas that are sold in the world. Yeah, yeah. And so we've collaborated. They've actually done field trials with our technology and, and liked it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for reasons that involve uh, tolerance rather than resistance mm -hmm. to a particular fungus, they're waiting to stack that with another trait that will actually make bananas resistant to this devastating fungus. So we hope to get much more involved in Israel in the future when they're successful. Oh, wonderful. Did you know that actually as part of this road show, Tel Aviv is one of the places they're going to stop? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, that's the next stop from San Francisco is to actually sure. go through and before go, going back to the big festival that's going to happen in October. So you should definitely be part of the, the road show in Israel. Well, shalom. Yes, shalom. Again, thank you very much, Jerry, for joining. Thank and you. really appreciate everything you shared. Take care.